Welcome to Bible Basics. Today we're looking at God. We'll be taking a scriptural look at God, seeing a few of His most basic aspects. First, we will consider God as the Creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There once was nothing except for God, just God alone. God started with a blank slate, an empty canvas. That's how everything starts. For every house is constructed by someone, yet he who constructs all is God. So God created the entire universe out of himself. Everything is out of God. Out of him and through him and to him are all things. He's the first cause. He's the great cause. He's the ultimate cause. In the beginning, God. We must learn this first, if we will learn anything. We must start our understanding with God himself, for he is the beginning of everything. Since once there was nothing but God, then of course all came out of him. Regardless of what his creatures may assert, God is also all-knowing. The God of scriptures knows all things. He is perfect in understanding. His understanding is infinite. He is declaring the end from the beginning and declaring from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Thus, Paul sums up God's knowledge this way. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory for the ages. Regardless of what his finite creatures may have to say, the infinite God of Scripture is all-knowing, period. And we can rest in that. God is also sovereign. That he is sovereign means that God has absolute power and control. He is in charge and nothing stands in his way of accomplishing his purpose. So regardless of what his creatures may insist, the God of Scripture is the absolute sovereign of his own universe. The God of Scripture is the Almighty God, he is in the heavens, and he has done whatsoever he has pleased. He rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will. And he does what he wants with the forces of heaven and the inhabitants of the earth, and there is no one who can hold back his hand. God's sovereign power extends over every aspect of our lives. For, Psalm 139.16, all of our days were recorded before we were even born. And even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. God's most basic title in Scripture is the Hebrew word El, often translated God. The meaning of El is subjector. Subjector means that God is the all-wise, all-powerful sovereign of his own universe. El corresponds to the Greek word theos, meaning placer. Thus, God is the placer and the subjector. He has placed everything where it belongs, and he has subjected it to the circumstances that he's determined, so that in the end he will be all in all. In other words, God will be everything in everything, and everything to everyone. El is the root of Elohim, the powerful word used most often as the title of God. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. E.W. Bullinger tells us that Elohim is God the Creator putting His omnipotence into operation. Elohim occurs 2,700 times in the Scripture. Its first occurrence connects it with creation and gives it its essential meaning as the Creator. It indicates His relation to mankind as His creatures. 
And of course you know that the scriptures teach us that God is love. Simply put, love is who God is. Though he may have many other attributes and qualities, that God is love tells us of his very essence. A. E. Nock defines love, agape, as a complex emotion arousing appreciation or delight in and desire for the presence of its object, as well as to please and promote its welfare. Nock also fittingly articulated this glorious truth of love being God's essence. We are never told that God is justice, or God is power, or God is wisdom. These are his attributes, not his essence. All of his attributes appear and withdraw at the beck of love. All serve it and never go counter to its commands. We can safely lay our heads on the bosom of his love and there learn the great lesson that he is love and has both the power and wisdom to carry out the dictates of his affection. What clearer proof can be given that all that he has done and is doing is leading up to that grand ultimate when he will be all in all. God's love for us is not contingent on something within us. We are the offspring of God. So he is our father. He's the one God and father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. God gave us earthly families so that we could know, in some small measure, the nature of his fatherly love for us. Be a type of unconditional love, it pales in comparison to that of our Heavenly Father's love, fixed upon us as the object of his love and divine love never fails. So our Creator is also our Father, and we are his children. And we're on a journey to learn the limitlessness and boundlessness of his love toward us. And the love of God is the true basis of redemption. For God has a great longing toward his creation. Simply put, he loves what he's made. You have a desire to the work of your hand. This means that God loves you. This is why A.P. Adams wrote, This is the true basis of redemption. God, our creator, responsible for his own creation and every attribute of his being, pledged to its successful completion. The creature may rest secure on that basis. The full assurance of deliverance and final triumph of being, I am yours.